In most games, the more light sources, the more laggy. As you've probably already figured out, in Minecraft this is not the case. How is Minecraft of all games the one that stands out so much? It's a long story. Most lighting systems in games are either pixel by pixel calculations from the camera's point of view or are predetermined textures that are calculated earlier. This makes lighting laggier the more and more light sources are close to the surface being rendered, as the calculations have to be run for each source. As you may be able to tell, Minecraft takes a completely different approach because its objects and light sources are all cubic and don't need a complex realistic lighting system. Because all of Minecraft's objects are cubes that don't change unless given a block update, that's an episode for another day by the way, lighting can be calculated in a grid. Let's start with the light that comes from the sky, or skylight. Each chunk generated will look at the top layer of blocks and set them to the max skylight level, or 15. The chunk then scans downwards, putting skylight level 15 on every block until it hits a translucent block where it reduces the light level, or an opaque block where it sets the light level to zero. Once such a block is reached, light propagates out using a flood field formula, decreasing one every block. Confusing? Here, let me go a little bit more in depth. A cued blood fill algorithm is when you choose a starting point and the thing you're spreading goes out in a diamond shape to fill every single pixel within a certain taxicab distance. See last episode for more on that. This spread goes in all six directions, up, down, left, right, backwards, and forward. It's calculated for each individual block so the light can go around corners. In Minecraft, each tile that light is spread to makes the light go down by one, forming the diamond-shaped light propagation we all know and love. This distance is 15 blocks. Block light works this way too, but is more yellow in color and doesn't get darker as the sky gets darker. Where it gets complicated though is when you change blocks around by either mining, placing, or pushing. Whenever you mine a block, that block is not deleted, rather replaced with air which, pretty much like everything else, could have a full episode on this series. When you place a block, you're really just changing air to something else. Pushing is just changing blocks to imitate old blocks in new positions. The one thing these all have in common are new block values and information. Each block in Minecraft has a translucency value, which is how much light it lets pass through it. For most blocks, this is zero, or completely solid, where no light can pass through, like so. For things like leaves, though, it's more like 14, where pure skylight is broken when touched, but still sends light through. Just instead of staying at 15, the light will decrease in amount when touching the block, then smoothly fade out as it gets further and further. The reason tall trees don't cast darker shadows is because any tiles that have a direct upwards path to the sky will bleed their light onto the nearby tiles, creating shadow. Bright and dark are rendered in-game through a single color. This color is painted onto the block textures to darken them when in shadow. Take a look at this diagram. This is one of the most interesting parts of lighting, and I'm going to explain it as well as I can because understanding what this diagram means makes it even more beautiful. Beautiful. The x-axis is block light, or the light from lava, torches, and other blocks. Left is no light, and right is full light, so like, inside of lava. The y-axis is skylight. Up is no skylight, and down is pure skylight. Notice on the night part of the diagram, on the bottom left, which is if you were to be outside at nighttime with no torches, it's blue. This is the color of moonlight, and if you were to place white concrete down in that light, that's exactly the color it would be. It may look as though having level 15 block light is blindingly bright, but we know that's not true. Stand outside in the daytime or in a well-lit house, and it's completely comfortable. That's because when putting colors onto an image, which is what the tiles are, computers don't combine the colors like combining light, they subtract the absence of light. Now this is when most people would say, bear with me, I'll try to explain, but I love explaining things such as this, and judging by how far you made it into this video, you do too. Please make sure to give it a like, and let's continue. Our eyes have three different colored rods, not red, yellow, and blue like the primary colors, but red, green, and blue. These rods sense light from these three colors and combine them. Computer screens use this, and each pixel on your device you are watching this on right now is made up of three mini pixels. One for red, one for green, and one for blue. Many devices use magenta, yellow, and cyan as they are the opposites of these colors, but they work the same way, so for simplicity's sake, I'll stick to RGB. Each mini pixel can get brighter or darker, and the range goes from zero, or full darkness, to 255, or full bright. Full bright red, and empty green and blue, is red. Full green, and the empty others, is just green. Full bright blue, is obviously blue. 
Full red and green, but empty blue is yellow. Full green and blue is cyan, and full blue and red is magenta, and full everything is white. You with me? So, if you were to ask a computer to combine white and white, you'd be trying to get 510 on all three, which is above the max and impossible. What the? Even just trying to mix two light grays would go off the scale. You might be saying, just take the average of the values. And that actually is very good and is used in color mixing and art. But for lighting, that would mean white concrete in pitch black darkness would only get as dark as medium gray. When in real life, anything can be black if there's no light. So what the computer actually does for non-art mixing is take the first color and subtract any absence of light from the three values on the second. For example, say you have cyan or 0, 255, 255. Mixing it with dark gray or about 100, 100, 100 would subtract 155 from each value as 100 is 155 from the max, 255. So, 255 minus 100 is 155. This would result in 0, because the values just minimize at 0, 100, 100, or dark cyan. Mixing any color with black will give us black, as we're subtracting 255 from every color. This is how the lighting should work, and it's why white doesn't make things white, it keeps things the same. The textures in-game are exactly the color they appear at, at full brightness. The brightness setting controls how much lighting actually has an effect on the textures. I suspect it is division, with one being added to whatever you choose in-game. This would make choosing moody, lowest brightness setting, directly apply the colors shown in the diagram to the textures. Choosing bright, the highest brightness setting, divides the lighting layer by two, cause one plus one equals two. This means hacking the game's files to allow for higher brightness, such as 300%, yes I have actually done this, would make light only have one fourth the impact it does on Moody. This divide by the brightness plus one is just an estimate and might be slightly off in reality. And that's pretty much it. Psych! Did you really think it was gonna be that easy? It almost is, but nothing in programming is ever as easy as it looks. Minecraft can look pretty simple on the surface, just being a block world with block adventures, but for every minute you play the game or are doing something else, Dozens of people are hard at work adding something new or fixing a bug. All lessons and awakenings aside, we actually are almost done. There are just two, two more things, things, dynamic lighting and smooth lighting. These have two different problems. Dynamic lighting is super hard to grasp and understand, but relatively simple to code once understood. Smooth lighting, on the other hand, is very easy to understand, but is presumably difficult to code. Dynamic lighting is how the lighting system can change and adapt to changes in the environment, such as mining a hole to the surface or blocking up a light passage. Smooth lighting is the setting that can be found that smooths out the harsh lines between blocks and adds dark parts in the corners for realism. That's why turning it off can make it easier to see in caves, as it adds more dark parts. Smooth lighting is now explained, but even I don't fully grasp dynamic lighting yet, and it could take another episode to explain entirely. But the basic idea is quite simple. Whenever a new block is in a tile, or at least a block with a different transparency from the previous one, pushing glass over a tunnel won't actually change the lighting since it's transparent like the air. Calculations must be redone. If a light source is destroyed, all light of decreasing value must be set to zero to be recalculated. Afterwards, if there should be any light on those blocks, it will repropagate from other sources. A pretty simple concept, but what gets hard is that there are so many cases and exceptions. If a block is placed blocking a light, how will that block know to remove all light to the side of it? How does it know that there's a light source just a little ways out? What if a block at maximum brightness is placed instead of sunlit air tile? How will the calculations be made? It's all about the exceptions, how to deal with them, and how to deal with them without causing lag that makes dynamic lighting a nightmare. But, you've reached the end of this episode. You don't just know about a small part of the lighting or specific lighting values of blocks, you now know the entirety of the lighting system, including what it even is, where most people would just leave it as, it's light. I'm very proud of you for wanting to learn so much about this, and I know that you would love to see the rest of the series. Here's the full playlist, so then you can choose which ones you want to watch. See you there!